This is for men who want to have an abundant and amazing, not just a sex life, like incredible amounts of sex, but what I call endless sexual euphoria, like this feeling all the time that you have abundance in your life because you have such abundant sex, which I'm saying is like hours of sex every week with someone that you really love and just can't get enough of. And that you could be doing that now, 10 years, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And it's just better than it was before. It just keeps getting better and better. It's important that you like and subscribe to this. So please click on the like and hit subscribe. And here's something that I want you to do. Hit the bell icon. That way, wherever you are, you will get a notice of the new video that I have out that you can watch wherever you are. You'll just love it. This is all due to um, what I have been calling the oxytocin hack. And um, I'm going to show you just real quick some evidence for the oxytocin hack and what it does and why it works. Um, but um, what we're doing today is I'm going to go over uh, my story and what I learned from it. The, the key, which is the dopamine track in life versus the oxytocin track in life and how you can pick one or the other. And it'll help you get completely where you're like feeling this strong libido all the time. Mm -hmm. and you feel this, um, this, this power in your life where you have women very attracted to you, where you have a assertiveness that communicates itself automatically, not just to women, but to men, where you have abundance in every area of your life. And uh, I'm especially concerned in this uh, webinar with the younger men. So I've had uh, 700,000 men subscribe to our newsletters. Amazing. Yep. And, you know, uh, Heather and I have worked together. We have a whole team. We have 18 people that are in health research, sex research, helping to get the word out, assistance, an amazing organization. And uh, we've been doing this for um, at least 12 years, but I've been a health researcher for like 25 years. I've been mm -hmm. interviewed on ABC News. I've been quoted on several million websites. And um, this is everything that you really, really should have w and wanted to ever know about sex and love, which you'll never find out because the normal way we find out this stuff is just never discovering it because nobody ever tells us. Oh and my we, gosh. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a total, it's a total knowledge education problem. It's not anything defective with you or anything like that. No. It's just the paradigms in our culture are, um, they make people miserable. <laughs> miserable. No, no one learns this. It's not like right. we learn it. So, uh, it, 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 other way, and it's just something that, um, <clears throat> We probably knew the tantrics and the Ayurvedics and the Taoists knew as far as sex probably over thousands of years, but it's going to be completely lost. Now, I am not a person that's going to be discussing this in a spiritual fashion. I'm going to be discussing it in a practical fashion. Mm -hmm. So I'm addressing you if you want to have a tremendous sex life, if you want to have 30 or 45 minute uh, sex every day of the week, if you want to meet a woman and, and have an incredible relationship that just gets better and better over time. This is what it's for. Now, I find maybe 5 or 10% of men are not ever interested in just one woman or settling down. And if you want to be single and do this, that's perfectly workable and perfectly great as well. Um, if you're in your 20s and 30s, congratulations. You're finding this out at just the right time. It could mm -hmm. save, your, save your life, really. And if you're an older guy, uh, then you probably picked up a whole different set of sexual habits because you grew up in the days before high-speed video porn changed everything. And this will still completely help you in a different direction that would be so much, so much, so much, so much better. So um, what I like to do in these is I like to use these mind maps to kind of help us move along. But you can just listen if you prefer on, on YouTube or whatever. You can just listen. You don't have to watch. Uh, but it, uh, that's what I'll do. And I'll be on this sort of track here. So um, the thing to be aware of is that our brains wire each differently. We wire each differently depending on our experiences, especially early on in our formative years. That's mm -hmm. when our sexuality is wired. We have a natural sexuality, certainly, that is innate in us. And if you're a male, it's male. <laughs> it's not female. It's not anything other than 50 genders. It's male. Um, but the thing is that for men who are under 40, they developed their formative years. They developed over a lot of times, very easy availability of high-speed video porn. Now, um, I was involved with a website early on that we just had literally thousands of men just sort of settle in this website. Young men were having terrible erectile dysfunction. They just ended up here, and we helped them get over it. And this is what we found is we found that it was a, a porn problem. And then some of those guys went and started these uh, websites and, and, and Reddit groups and stuff called NoFap. Mm -hmm. It started all from this website. And we said, please 
go and start that and you can get the word out to many more men than you can on our tiny little website. Right. And uh, that's what happened. And, and we learned we learned basically that it's not just porn, but we learned that the um, wiring that ca- that porn results in when you're young, when you grow up with it, it screws up your brain sexuality completely. And it uh, it can be fixed pretty easily because the brain is plastic. It's called neuroplastic, neuroplasticity. Oh, the thank God can, for that. Yeah, and it's pretty <laughs> easy. The brain changes, you know, pretty easily if you know how to do it. So you, if you have ED, if you have lack of motivation, if you feel like you don't have meaning in your life, if you feel like you're just not interested in dating, you know, there's all these channels out there that are on, on YouTube and on Reddit, and they're telling men that we're screwed, that women are terrible these days that they're all messed up Mm. and so a lot of women have given up on men and a lot of men have given up on women in the sense that it's just not worth the effort anymore so dating is just collapsing right now you probably have heard about this heather maybe you know it with your own children i don't know you know every young person i talk to so i I do speak with a lot of young people because my kids are young adults Um, and every young person i talk to who is not in a relationship says that it's so hard to find people who want to be in a relationship. Right. So there's this there's this like dichotomy going on right now with young people where the young people that I'm talking to want to be in a relationship, but they can't find other people who want to be in a relationship. And that just seems to be the I think that seems to be a common I I, I think that what's happening versus what people want are very different. Yeah. So a lot of people sense. can't find anyone who can form a relationship with. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But what I want to get to is that this is a hack, which I call the oxytocin hack, and you'll find out why in a, in a few moments. And this hack will allow you to form a very strong relationship with a woman and to find women that want you and for you to want them. And it completely overcomes this this issue. Mm. And it, it'll create a, a tremendous amount of happiness and um, tremendous amount of joy, romantic love, happiness, connection. Uh, and it just gets better and better over time. And all of this stuff, the lack of interest, the lack of motivation, sexual issues, maybe not having good erections when you're with a partner and all that mm-hmm. is all gone now. And it's all because of the brain wiring. Basically, what porn does is it wires our brains to respond to a set of different videos, the different um, activities and different people, which is novelty. Right. And that, um, that extreme novelty is what um, neuropsychologists call super stimulus. There's a part of the brain, which you probably heard of, the reward circuitry in the brain. And um, it, there's a, a hormone or a, a chemical dopamine, which uh, increases our desire to get a reward, basically. Right. And so what porn, out, porn does is it wires our brains to get that reward through pixels and masturbation rather than through a partner. And when you get on that kind of like, hyper dopamine track i would yes. call it like where like it's just way more than you're built for it doesn't actually make you happy there it it makes you it makes you very anxious and like wanty but not happy anxiety and neediness yes I would agree anxiety with you. and neediness yep, yeah that's a good yeah, word exactly exactly right i i totally <clears throat> see that uh unfortunately it can be undone but what this has done is also besides the wiring of this for for women it's created a uh, unrealistic expectations about penis size. Oh, about yeah. Looking at men like sexual robots, mm-hmm. comparing this, that, and the other, this person with that person, and making it into a mechanical act. So basically, if you look at throughout whole of history, this recent change between the pill, you know, birth control, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and the extreme uh, uh, video availability of video online porn, you have this... Um, complete change where women have become more masculine in the sense like like men like a way that they approach sex right okay and it's really hurt everybody because we want women to be feminine and men to be masculine it works so much better that way if you feel like you're a man who's not that masculine this is also going to help you become very masculine and it's gonna it's a very simple the oxytocin hack very very simple so let's get right right into it um in order to do that i want to tell you a little bit about my story, what was happening to me, because for my entire life, even from I was 12 or 13, I was using porn. And um, if you, as, as I have, if you were to talk to thousands and thousands and thousands of men, you find out that some men who got involved in porn as young, as boys, have a very, very difficult time of it sexually 
have erectile dysfunction, have just strange brain wiring. And it's, it's, it's like the earlier you got into it, the worse it is. You know what? This is crazy too, because porn is really um, celebrated in our society mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Right. And, uh, and so and you never hear this. Like, so h- how do you know that that's true? Like, is it your experience talking to men that, that you know that the, the early exposure to porn? Yeah, you that's never exactly hear why I know that. Else. That's yeah. all exactly why I know that. Right. There are some studies about it, um, which I won't bore you with at the moment, but it's absolutely true. So every time I've talked to a man who has ED and has a lot of troubles with sex, um, in many cases, they got involved in a porn at a very young age. It's in really the interesting. Days, they would have found a stash of their dad's magazines under the bed or in his, right. you know, or, you know, every single time. It's a very, very common issue, and it's... Uh, happening now to everyone because most young men today have when they're starting to be interested in sex at puberty they started with high-speed porn right away so they're right they're a perfect example of well i went through much longer ago than that because i'm much older um, right but um yeah so so you know i would um yeah I, I mean i just used porn routinely and masturbated to porn i wired my brain to porn so when um i started dating um girls I had a lot of trouble with ED. I had tremendous trouble getting hard, and I lost girlfriends because of that. Um, and also, I I felt like I was lonely. I felt disconnected from life. I felt hopeless. Mm-hmm. And it, and and for a guy who's got that issue of ED, it's hard to get motivated to go out on another date or to try to meet women, or to, you know. And if you're in a relationship and you're having that, it's hard. What I'm going to tell you is nothing necessarily to do with ED, but that was my story. That, that was, and it's the story of a lot of guys that we've coached and worked with over the years, thousands, right. tens of thousands of men at this stage that we've we've worked with. Um, so um, and then I ended up uh, I went to a hypnotherapist. I tried a lot of things. I completely got over it and, and everything. And but I still use porn. I still didn't realize the connection. And then uh, maybe 12 or 15 years ago, I, I stumbled on this small group of men and women who were practicing this very advanced form of sex, which was allow you to last for hours and hours and uh, have this incredible connection with your partner. And I said, I wanted to do that. And I learned how to do that. And I learned how to make it super simple for other people to do it. I call it Nirvana sex. And we've taught tens of thousands of men and couples Nirvana sex in the intervening years. And um, it completely takes you away from any desire for all of that uh, porn and takes you into a different A whole different thing. It turns out there is one scent that a woman just can't get enough of on a man. One scent. I would, if I smelt this on him, I would jump on him for sure. (laughs) I couldn't keep my hands off of him the whole night. So what would you do if your boyfriend was wearing this cologne? I'd, we'd have to we'd have to go. I'd have to <laughs> go meet him right now. Scientists have found that the one scent works through the terminal nerve and may create a strong romantic response in women. It's a sexy smell. It's a sexy smell. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just walking past this guy and OMG, I smelled the best thing ever. You can't buy this one scent in any department store. And you can't find this one scent anywhere else. But I'm going to send you a full trial bottle of the one scent so you can try it out for yourself and see how much abundance you're getting in your life. One guy is using the one scent when doing his errands, like going to the grocery store, and now he's chatting up women and going home with more than just his groceries, if you know what I mean. John's wearing this one scent at work, and now the two cute young interns who have never noticed him before are both asking him out all in the same week. Another guy is getting attractive younger women stopping him on the street, with one girl leaning in and inhaling his scent. He's already had multiple encounters with beautiful women. Mike tells me he's using this one scent when doing the deed. He says that women love it so much that one woman is keeping his shirt to smell during the day when she's away from him. These guys are just starting their incredible life of abundance, and I know you can too by using this one scent. And so so with that, what I discovered was, I will show you a study or two right here because it will, uh, I think, help uh, bring the... um, I think it'll bring this, uh, make it make it more clear here for a second here. Uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, 
let's see if I can make this bigger. So th this is just a, 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 what's called a review. It's not a study, but it's a review. It's pretty new, uh, but and, and it's about the relationship between dopamine and oxytocin and how it ties into penile erections. Now, what I discovered was that there is a tie-in between erections and oxytocin, erections and dopamine. So let me explain that. I realize that there is a track you can be on in life that takes you in a certain direction. That direction can be what I call on the oxytocin track or the dopamine track. Oxytocin track, dopamine track. Okay, completely different tracks and they have all different results, not just sexually, but in every way in your entire life. So this, these studies bore out what I had already knew, but I, I read a lot of these studies early on, all kinds of studies about, about dopamine and oxytocin. Now people call oxytocin the love hormone, and it, it is kind of, but it's so much more than that. And calling it the love hormone makes it sound kind of, kind of trivial. But let mm. me kind of explain these, these tracks and what we're talking about here, uh, back to my, to my mind map here. The dopamine track, is uh, where you is 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 for the reward circuits, which gets you to want things. Mm -hmm. The reward circuit in our brain gets us to want to go shopping, gets us to want to drink water when we're thirsty or want right. to have a meal when we're hungry. It, it gets us to want to go out with a woman. It gets us to want to. Uh, it's a it's a hormone of want. Dopamine is critically important. It's a hormone of want. If you have low dopamine, it causes physical problems perhaps Parkinsonism, but beyond that, it just causes you to be what they call anhedonic, where you're flatlining and you don't mm -hmm. want anything and you don't really care about anything and there's no <coughs> pleasure in life. And nobody wants to live that way. Everybody wants to have some dopamine so we, we have a good feeling in life, right? So we feel really good. Exactly. But, however, you need some, yes. You need some. You absolutely do. It's wonderful stuff. It's wonderful <laughs> stuff. But the problem is that when you're on this dopamine track, you're always wanting more. One of the big things about uh, the dopamine track is it's never satisfied. Right. So people live their lives with sex, where they're going from one partner to the next, from one thing to the next, especially if they're in a long-term relationship, they're quickly bored. And mm -hmm. in a few years, like, I don't know, this is getting old. So the dopamine track never gives us satisfaction, always gets us to want more, and we feel disappointed. And then we decide, well, let us try things like escalation, or right. re-stimulation to avoid disappointment, mm -hmm. which means let's try things that are more extreme. Um, when I think when I was growing up, like anal sex wasn't a big deal. Like not that many people did it, but now everybody does it. Not that there's anything wrong with anal sex or anything else that people do sexually between uh, adults that are consenting, but the point is that there's been an escalation of activities away from intercourse to all sorts of things because that's Everybody, almost the whole world is on this dopamine track of never being mm -hmm. happy, never being satisfied, always wanting to escalate into other things, other lifestyles, all sorts of things that you can find on the Internet now that, you didn't, that didn't exist before. Right. And so that's the strategy is let's try to escalate. Let's try to get more extreme. Let's try to get more intense. What it causes, dopamine causes anxiety itself. It causes anxiety of not having enough, wanting more. It's always this anxiety and it results in addictive and destructive behaviors. The things like drug and alcohol use, um, just to, to name some, I mean, there's a lot more. Shopping, gambling, all kinds of, of things that we would call vices that are basically because we're on this track and we don't realize it. We don't really realize it. We don't really understand that we're on this track. And sexually, it's just constantly disappointing and a bummer and we always want something new and we don't get it and we're unhappy. And what I found is that when I solved this, when I went on the oxytocin track, which is this other track, I ended up with abundance sexually, but I also had abundance in love and I had abundance in wealth. I had abundance in every area of my life. Mm -hmm. And my belief is that our, as men, our abundance is limited when we're on the dopamine track. And it's unlimited on the oxytocin track. If you've read a very famous book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, right? Uh, he spent a whole chapter. It's one of the most famous self-help books ever written, if not mm -hmm. the most famous one, Think and Get Rich, Grow Rich. A whole chapter about this he calls sublimation of the sex drive to basically industry and entrepreneurship and acquiring wealth and all of that. And so men who are just using porn or on the dopamine track, they are uh, completely losing their masculine energies, wasting them, and they're not able to build on, on their lives and build the wealth and 
abundance in, in sex, wealth, and everything else. They're not able to get that abundance. Right. That's the result. It's just wanting more and not ever getting it. I think it's really important to point out here, too, that a lot of modern life is set up mostly intentionally, but sometimes unintentionally, including porn, to put you on the dopamine track and leave you anxious and leave you nervous and leave you feeling um, super stressed out all the time. Uh, They do it because it sells. I mean, it it keeps your eyeballs glued to the screen. So that's how they get paid. Yeah. They get paid by your clicking the next porn thing or the next uh, ad or whatever it is. Right. It's, it's Hmm. specifically developed to be addictive and to create this, um, to create this like desire that leads to this high levels of stress and anxiety. So uh, it, like it's engineered to hack your brain that way. Cause they're and, getting paid for that. I mean, yes. they get paid for that. That's one of the things, one of the um, early um, developers of Facebook, I mean, software developers, mm-hmm. you know, he left, he became very wealthy, but he talked, spoke out against Facebook. He, I don't know if you saw this a year or two ago and he said it was designed to be very addictive and pr- provoking and increasing anxiety. Mm-hmm. So that people would go to click the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Um, and it and it works. I mean, people spend hours every day on social media now, and it yeah. doesn't make them feel good. It makes them feel worse. We are here to talk about mainly about the sexuality, but the dopamine track is exactly the same in all of that. And I found that I was able to control my addictive behaviors as far as clicking and everything much more easily when I moved to the oxytocin track. Uh, right. So it was a, a huge, uh, a huge advantage for me. So the oxytocin track is um, completely different. It's amazing, Uh, and you can choose to move on to it, which is really awesome. Yeah, you could choose to move on to it. It's really a choice. It it gives you abundance in sex. uh, uh, So for the normal sex act, let's say it would be your, um, you know, you're warming up with your partner for 10 minutes or whatever. When there's intercourse that starts, it may last five or 10 minutes. It's seldom more. I mean, the actual numbers are like five or six minutes. An orgasm lasts 10 or 15 seconds. And then as a man, you um, have a refractory period for a few days, sometimes longer, where you feel kind of unhappy, weak, um, just not very interested. It's like a low dopamine period, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, You're certainly, it's just a bummer. You know, it's drained. You feel empty and drained. Right. That's basically what happens. So with the oxytocin tract, that doesn't happen. You have this amazing ability to see the, the best things in your life and shape them the way you want them to. Uh, you don't feel like you're draining, drained, you're overflowing with love and wealth. Um, it's an incredible feeling. And your libido is always really, really good. Mm. Um, so that's that's the oxytocin track. It's not wanting more. It's having everything already. Right. Now, common question I get at this point is, Matt, what if I feel so great, I don't even want to get out of the bed in the morning. Why would I go to my, you know, tell my boss to go f off you know what do i need anything for i just why would i just sit there and just let everything go by like why would i have any motivation at all if i'm as happy as you say i'm going to be <laughs> and my, <laughs> my answer is that you will enjoy those things in your life and you'll find that you'll change things like if you don't really like your job you'll find yourself in a much better more enjoyable job uh-huh. uh, your whole life will get better you'll be improving it you'll just find yourself doing that without going to war with yourself without any pressure or trying to you know, push yourself. It just will happen automatically. That's my answer. I think this is a very common misconception too, right? Like you have to, I think you feel like you have to like, everything has to be difficult and hard and everything has to be like, there's like a punishment aspect and motivation, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think it's a religious uh, thing that we're, we grew up with the idea we have to punish ourselves, like feeling guilty Mm -hmm. and ashamed and, and all that. And it doesn't have to be that way at all. No. So when you have the oxytocin hack going in your life, you're on the oxytocin track, you have very frequent intercourse and, you know, everything else is fine in terms of sex, oral and all the rest of it. It's fine. But intercourse is like incredibly great. And uh-huh. it's really what you just love, love, love doing. And um, there are many studies showing that people that have frequent intercourse are much happier people. Mm. And they also live longer and are healthier. So... I mean, it's everything going for you. And in my um, experience, it causes you to f- discover much greater wealth. I've had people literally say they had tripled their income in a year because of this. They don't that's... even know why. I have no idea why. It just is. It's, it's that <laughs> it's important. It's wild, isn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
I spent 25 years researching why some men live to 110 or 120. Everyone thinks it's genetic. They think these people have special genes to live to 110 or 120, but I found that's not true. I found that all these men who are 100, 110, or 120, all of them are eating this one food. Gregoras Tas. He's drinking wine. He's having fun with friends. He walks two hilly miles a day in his native Greece. He's eating this one food. He's 110. Stanislaw Kowalski, he starts jogging at the age of 104. He's eating this one food now. He's 110, he's running marathons. Arturo Licata from Italy, he loves pasta with ricotta cheese. He has a wonderful life. He eats this one food. He's gonna be turning 112. Swami Svivananda, he sleeps on a board on a mat. He takes trains by himself. He is proven that he's 125 and he's eating this one food. Haj Musa from Turkey, he celebrates life every day. His wife's 110, they love each other so much. He and she eat this one food. He's said to be 130 years old. So why aren't we all eating this one food if it's so great? It's because the so-called experts tell us to avoid this one food. Remember Yule Gibbons, the guy that was on TV all those years ago? He was made famous by the cereal ads, right? Gibbons avoided this one food and he passed at an age of 64. Nathan Pritikin, he was one of the greatest food gurus of all time. He avoided this one food, lived to age 69. And then there's Dr. Robert Atkins. He was the author of the all-time best-selling diet book. Passes, sadly, at the age of 72. So who would you rather copy? Men like 110-year-old Gregoras Tahas, 125-year-old Swami Savananda, 130-year-old Haji Musa, or these men who expired young despite their being the supposed experts. My name is Matt Cook. I'm an Amazon best-selling author. And recently I was interviewed by ABC News. When I discovered this one food and all these men that I was studying living to 100, 110, 120, I spent years figuring it all out, researching things, traveling around the world and discovering what it was about this one superfood that keeps men so healthy and living such a long life. I found along the way that these men do things completely differently than anyone else. So I'm eating this one food now, I'm following everything they say, and I am hoping that I live to 120, and I think that I will. So I have these notes, these discoveries, years and years and years of research. I'm talking to my wife, Jody. She says, why don't you put that into a book and share your notes? So I spent a long time putting them all into a book I call Healthy to 120. I had a small number of copies printed out and I'm gonna mail one to your house. Go ahead, click on the link to claim your free copy. All you have to do is just help me out with shipping. That's it. Let me just tell you the discoveries that I've made and how I've adapted this one food in a lot of different areas of health. Listen closely, blood sugar. Blood sugar is super, super important. I discovered that these very, very old men have perfect blood sugar. Mine was high. So I started doing what they're doing. I adjusted a little bit like a tweak in how I have breakfast now. And my blood sugar is like 80, 85, 90 when I wake up every day, which is which is really good. I put that on page 276. Then there's fitness and exercise. None of these men work out in a gym, but they're super fit. I wanted to be fit. So what I did is I looked at what they do to stay active. And I found like a 10 minute routine and activity I do every day and I'm really fit and I don't have to worry about setting foot in the gym. That's on page 316. Prostate health is key to men. Without it, we're sunk. These men have no pee problems. And I was having those problems. So I looked at what they do and their diet and all these sort of things. And I came up with this, I'll just call it a, a tapping, 90 second tapping thing, keeping my prostate great, no more pee problems. Instead of getting up three times a night, I don't get up at all. My wife, Jody gets to sleep and we're much happier this way. Page 101. So let's take cholesterol. You know how a lot of guys worry so much about cholesterol. Well, these men virtually all have perfect cholesterol. And I think it's because their metabolic rate is high. And when your metabolic rate is high, you have good, normal cholesterol. So I figured out a way to maintain my metabolic rate. My cholesterol numbers are outstanding. My doctor said, you don't need to take anything. I don't know what you're doing. Just keep doing it. I'll, I put that on page 162. So let's talk about weight. None of these men are fat, but none of them are on a diet either. They're eating the one food, remember. And I did a little bit of tweaking with the one food and I was able to lose 38 pounds. I went from about 225 to 188. And I show you exactly what I did. No counting calories, no skipping meals, nothing like that. Super, super easy. I put that on page 250. Blood pressure is another thing. Now blood pressure is something we don't think about. These long live men all have great blood pressure. I found that living at high altitude in the mountains, in the hills helps blood pressure. But I came up with a very simple way since I'm living on the flatlands to have good blood pressure. Mine's 120. 
120 over 80 now using an oxygen method that simulates altitude. It's real easy. It's got my blood pressure great and helped lots of other people. And I put that on page 139. So you can buy my book Health 120 on Amazon for $29.95 or let me send it to you without charge. I'll just ask you if you can to help me out with the shipping. That would be super, super. Go ahead, click on the link, claim your copy right now. I have a limited number printed. Thank you so much for listening, for staying with me. God bless you and your family. I hope he is shining his light and his love on you. And as I like to tell everyone I meet, I'll see you at 120. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, the reality is like that stress and performance pressure doesn't actually do anything for you. So like when you are feeling relaxed and happy, you actually get a lot more done. That's yeah. just the reality of the it. The stress actually hurts you, your ability yeah. to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it screws right. up the way your brain works. Yeah. I mean, they have this thing that uh, was developed, was, was discovered or written about by that guy with that uh, surgeon, Gialli, SCZ, very hard name. I still can't pronounce his name. The flow state. <laughs> uh -huh. It's when you're sitting there at work doing something and time is just disappears and you just are involved in your work and you don't even, you're not even aware of it. Oh, it's lunchtime already. God, I can't believe it. It's just like I sat, just sat down here in the morning. Right. And that, that's a way you can live your whole life where things just flow and happen around you and they're just great. And even when they're not great, they're great. So that's living life in the flow state is what I would call that. Now, in my experience, the, the uh, difficulties of getting on the oxytocin track is what I want to talk about now, what I would mm -hmm. call the three baddies, really. And those are the dependence on fantasy. And fantasy happens because we have wired our brains to be picturing sexual acts and usually reinforce with porn. And so it also um, is how we masturbate with fantasy and porn. Um, and there's nothing wrong with masturbation. It's perfectly fine. But the trouble is when you're wanting to rewire your brain and move on to the oxytocin track, you definitely need to stop masturbation. You need to stop all porn and you need to stop all fantasy. Mm -hmm. And we've put tools together for doing all those things and make it much, much easier. But um, you, you really want to, you want to, when you look at a woman, you don't want to picture having sex with her. You want to just look into her eyes and see her as a person. And this is what really changes. It changed for me is I stop picturing sex acts when I would see women and just let me communicate with them on a much deeper direct level. That's really profound. Yeah, it was. It was very profound. Um, and so, so one, the, the third thing that I think that you have to get out of, realize is a, is a problem, is the belief that hot sex is better sex. By that, I mean, if the sex is incredible, that's fine. But if it's really like hot and it's super exciting, that is usually where I've found the relationships um, kind of end up falling apart. Mm. Um, and it's because that's an extreme dopamine response. And there's always a repercussions to it, if you will. That's just sort of naturally there. Right? There's this idea of, you know, well, I just need space. The relationship's very emotional, very big ups and downs. So just as dopamine is a hormone of addiction, in a sense, dopamine is also the hormone of, of, of hot sex, pushing someone away, drama in a relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking at other people, there's something called the Coolidge effect that was named from President Coolidge. I don't think it had much to do with him, but they call it the Coolidge effect. It's a real thing. So after an orgasm, we start seeing other men start looking at other women as, as more interesting than their partner. And women have the same thing. When they have orgasms, they start looking at other men as better partners than their existing partner. So we start looking at other people. Right. That, that's the Coolidge effect. Yes. So, and, and to, to be, uh, to be extreme about it, if they, they've taken like a rat, a male rat, and he mates with his uh, female partner, and he's drained, man, he's in that refractory period, he can't mm -hmm. do anything else, can't get it up. Then they take that rat, they drop it into a, a cage with a bunch of receptive, willing females, mm. and that rat that was all drained, now that he has this novel females, gets it up again and goes at it with all these, uh, these females. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a definite so, biological uh, it, imperative there, it's right? It's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. So, so my um, desire for you watching this is that I want you to have a happy, wonderful life with abundant sex and, and romance and love and connection every, in every area of your life spilling out. So in general, that is better when you have a single partner that you're deeply in love with and she's deeply in love with you. Mm -hmm. And it, this, this hot sex, the belief that it's better... This dopamine track is the enemy of a good relationship. It's actually not 
helpful at all. So you can have you have incredible sex. It's better, a hundred times better, more pleasurable than it ever was before. It's not hot in the same way as it was because it's a lot better actually. There's no right. escalation needed. Um, and instead of, man, Heather, I can't tell you how many times with men I've had this discussion over the years as a guy. You know, oh man, just not getting enough. You know, mm-hmm. like men are always talking, always feel like they're not getting enough, whether they talk Absolutely. about it or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, when someone's going to get married, it's like the joke is, oh, that's sex is over, bro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, too, because like statistics say that very people have way more sex than single they do. people. But... They do. But, but basically, men are feeling a lack. They just feel yes. the pride of lack. This oxytocin track is the key to feeling abundance where you have more than enough. That's the thing. And it's different. And no one else will, will be in that but you. You will be the guy that has more than enough sex in his life. And it just changes everything. It's an amazing Amazing thing. It completely so, changes the paradigm too of like the old ball and chain and all of that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that like I know that just goes away <laughs> completely. Yeah, the ball and chain. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, and um, you you can experiment with this once you get into it. You're on the oxytocin track. If then you get back into using porn, or you get back into the escalation. You realize how unhappy you are, and then you want to go back. You, you can see, and I flipped over several times. I mean, it's like, I, it takes a while for the brain to really get it, mm-hmm. you know. But it's so obvious. It's so clear. It's so much better uh, that it's, it's unbelievable. Now, right. by the way, um, <laughs> it, we're in this day and age where there's supposedly this gender fluidity. Have you ever wondered why there's so much emphasis on this? Or why, what we used to call, you know, in the old days, deviant sexual behavior. Why is that okay now? I have I have not really wondered about that, but that's an interesting well, question. The question is very good one, and the re- and the answer is porn. It's just gotten everybody onto this extreme dopamine track and escalation where it's got you know, and then it starts. So I'll tell you what happened when we were helping these thousands of guys with porn addiction on this little website. A lot of the men who are perfectly straight would say that they like gay porn, and some of the gay men would say they like straight porn. Mm. So. It's like because it's um, it's a little bit what do you call it outside of what you want. It's um, you know, kind of a exciting. little taboo. Yeah, a little a taboo. taboo, exciting. Yes, right. Um, and and they weren't gay. You know, the gay people were were not straight. The straight men weren't gay. But um, it, it started, and then some of them would be very interested in all kinds of extreme, more extreme porn. And and basically, when they got out of that, they had been confused about their sexuality. Mm-hmm. Very confused. All kinds of confusion. When they got out of that, they stopped being confused. And they just felt like masculine men now. And they just right. discovered what it was like to be a real man because they had grown up basically spilling their seed, masturbating to porn, and they never knew what it was like to be just a regular, cool, masculine guy. Mm-hmm. And their sort of, I'll just call it deviation from the norm, sort of stopped. They just became like regular, healthy, masculine guys um, who aren't that regular anymore because there's so much porn use. So right. that's... I think that the domain track taken to an extreme results in gender dysphoria and all kinds of confusion. And, and all these people are very unhappy. None of them are, being, are happy with it. You know, have you noticed that? They're like yes, the most no. unhappy people. Right. It is. That is true. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, we're supposed to say, oh, it's fine. You know, it's, it's really not fine. It's, it's not it's not a good thing. And it's not where you want to be. Um, and uh, so so that that's result. So I want to tell you a little bit about what's on the other side. Once you get into this, mm-hmm. um, once, what's on the other side is the ability to look girls in the eye without like feeling like a, a little pervy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, you probably don't have this. Um, obviously, as a woman, you don't have this reaction, Heather. But for many, many, many years, I have felt weird. Like if I pass a school and there's kids or something like that, because I know I'm always suspect as a man looking into a schoolyard, for example. Yes, that is that is true for men. It's, it is true. And I think there's something about looking at women or, or attractive younger women <clears throat> looking at them. There's a it feels a little bit awkward instead of being just natural mm. because of this conditioning. And it can go away when you're when you're on this oxytocin track. It goes away. Um, th- there's this masculine confidence, which is instead of do is rather than do in other words just who you are you don't right. have to do anything you just it's who you are and um you know you can't help being an assertive masculine guy just that's who you are and women are very attracted to that there's very few of those right now 
Um, do you, I don't know if you noticed that a lot of younger men, don't they seem more feminine than they used to? Yeah, I think so. More, more than when I was a kid, for sure. I think so, too. Um, and they, they have just a little more effeminate, not quite as masculine, really. And I think that's, if you look at the actual uh, research, just as an anecdotal piece of evidence, there are these BuzzFeed editors that were male, these three guys, and they had their testosterone levels checked. There mm -hmm. were, this was a few years ago, they were in their, they're in their 20s, and it was very low. It was lower than like a lot of old men. God, testosterone levels and sperm counts, they've both been dropping for years. They've been plummeting. And yeah. this is the reason. It's this high-speed video porn and the dopamine track. This is the whole reason. So what happens is when you get on this track of oxytocin, your testosterone goes way up and it stays up. And my testosterone, I'm in my 60s. Mine is almost 900. I've had a number of, of tests. Mm -hmm. Plus my prolactin is fairly low and my estrogen is fairly low. Um, and it's, it's really because I practice this type of a lifestyle. It's not because I'm taking oodles of supplements or any sub, uh, medications or anything like that. I mean, that, and I, was, I haven't been taking any testosterone either. It's just naturally high. Um, here's another thing on the other side of this. You'll find that you have leadership qualities that you never knew you had. People just <laughs> naturally look at you as a leader. Um, That's an amazing it, side effect. I, people are always astounded by that when it starts happening. The men, yeah. the men are always astounded by that. Yeah, absolutely. There, it, it, it just happens. It just it, people just start looking at you. Well, what should we do? It's much more. Um, it's much easier to date women and to meet women than it's ever mm -hmm. been. It's easier to be clear-eyed about a relationship. Um, by that I mean, you could be having a sexual relationship with someone, and you say, "Well, it's not really right. It's just I'll never have anything really with this woman." I. She's like, you know, and you just decide you want to end the relationship, and it's not a high drama thing anymore. It's just like, right? There's not a lot of like blaming and nastiness. And <laughs> no one's key, car gets keyed. Nobody gets you no know. Taylor Swift things going on. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Clarkson yeah. socks. <laughs> yeah, nothing, none of that. <laughs> um, and uh, and then there's a couple of things with with men that that are very normal now. With morning erections, waking up with a strong erection is normal. If you mm -hmm. haven't been doing that, you will. And spontaneous erections, semi-erections, when you're just around a pretty girl or just in any other kind of situation, mm -hmm. you don't have to touch your penis to get hard. It just gets hard. Um, and you have extremely hard erections for sex. So that's on the other side of this. In other words, when you're on this uh, oxytocin track. I think that we had a few questions that might have come yes, up. Yes, we do. Absolutely, okay. we do. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let's just take a look at the questions here. All right. So uh, a big question is how long will it take to recover going from the dopamine track to the oxytocin track so um the sequence of events is a little weird so if you're withdrawing from porn and masturbation which you should to get this going you really have to what happens at some point fairly soon is you lose interest in sex altogether mm. and your penis stops responding to sexual cues it's like completely dead down there. It's called flatlining. We don't want any flatlining. That's bad We don't news. like flatlining. No. But I'll tell you an antidote to flatlining, but it's a normal thing, and it can go on for several months. Um, the, the antidote where you can avoid flatlining pretty much completely is if you have a partner. If you do a lot of naked cuddling and, you know, skin-to-skin -skin contact and mm -hmm. looking into each other's eyes and mm -hmm. holding hands and, and all that, that can get rid of flatlining pretty much immediately that mm. seems to maintain the oxytocin and the dopamine when you when you stop the uh porn and masturbation the uh, uh flatline doesn't have to happen mm. I, I always marveled at that i had a lifetime of masturbation once or twice a day and when i started this track i stopped it completely and never started again and i didn't flatline because we you know i was uh in bed cuddling and having this wonderful time with my with my wife several right. times a day so if you can, um, what I suggest men do, once you get through this period, if you're single, you will. You get through it. It could even take a, a month or two sometimes, sometimes three or four months. Um, but it's worth it. You just, and you should avoid looking at sexual scenes and sexual situations. You should uh, defocus your eyes or turn away when there's a sex scene. Anything that triggers you or is exciting, you should look away. That's extremely important mm -hmm. during that time. If you do that well, you're going to become very... Uh, high libido and, um, and and you'll have really good erections again so 
you may not feel like you're ready and you'll feel like maybe I don't think I can even get hard for sex, but you should start dating at that point as soon as you can. Because if you start dating and you meet a woman, you'll get over the flatlining really fast. And I just suggest, and I've touched a lot of men, they just talk to a woman about this. Mm -hmm. So you could start dating right away, even if you're in flatlining and you can get out of flatlining really, really fast and you meet somebody. And um, what you should do, and this is uh, something that uh, very, very critical is you shouldn't jump into bed and have sex with somebody or try to have sex with them right away. Mm -hmm. What you should do is you should say to her that I am uh, wanting to see if we have something really good together, so I don't want to have sex immediately with you. I mean, I want to, but I don't think it's a good idea. What I'd like to do is I'd like to sleep together, you know, and not have sex and just cuddle and just be close and look in each other's eyes and just see what happens. And then we'll have sex that's what you should do. And men who do this say it's just absolutely been fantastic. Right. I used to think that meeting girls was so hard. I would lay awake thinking, how am I going to get through life alone without someone to share it with? I feel like I'm missing out and running out of time. And now, suddenly, everything's changed. I'm watching this video. This video saying there's one scent women really go crazy over. When a guy smells good, it makes me want to snuggle up closer to him. If I smelt this on him, I would jump on him for sure. Because <laughs> I couldn't keep my hands off of him the whole night. And now that I'm using this one scent, I'm talking to women more. Women sometimes are approaching me. I'm going out more. So I was just walking past this guy and OMG, I smelled the best thing ever. Is on the top of the list, so, and this is killer. This guy smells good. I don't even know what he looks like, but he smells good. And that gives me a reason to like want to talk to him. I'm at the supermarket trying to decide which cereal I want. And this cute blonde starts talking to me. We exchange numbers and I get that a lot. I'm not doing anything differently. I'm still dressing the same, driving the same car, telling the same dumb jokes. Imagine someone like me dating three different girls. Can you believe it? And it's all because of this one scent that women go crazy for. And the women who aren't open to that are not mm -hmm. the right fit for you. Right, so, right, right. They're not interested in this. And really, if you have a woman that's totally on the dopamine track, you'll never be able to get on the oxytocin track yourself. And mm -hmm. you'll be unhappy and dragged around, and it's just not worth it. No, um, not at all. It seems like it is, but it is definitely not. So this is a really important place to put your foot down and say, this is what I want. Right. A lot of women are, are up for it because it's unusual for them to meet a guy who says that. And they say, oh, what, what the heck? Why not? I'll it's intriguing, it. right? It's like, intriguing. it's so out of the norm. So it's, it's a little so bit of novelty there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. So um, that's the answer to how long it can take and also how you want to get out of flatlining and how quickly you can by starting dating again when you don't think you're ready specifically. Right. Very good. Okay, so the next question? Yes. All yes. right. Um. This is one that we, we get a lot, right? This is a pretty common question. Will I ever be able to use porn again? So uh, al uh, alcoholics have found that um, the best thing to do when you're quitting alcohol is to say, I'm not going to have alcohol right now for a while. We'll see what happens. If you set it up for your whole life, say, I'm never going to have another drink again. It's very debilitating mentally because you've really gotten used to and loved alcohol. It's been so good to you in so many ways, mm -hmm. despite what people say. I mean, there's a lot of benefits people feel who are alcoholics. Or they, it's that it's, uh, it's too final. The brain rebels against it, and it's much right. more likely that they'll relapse. Right. But that, that's why they have that expression in AA. <clears throat> I've never been to AA, but I've read books about it. One day at a time. Mm -hmm. So I did quit drinking in 2003. I was not an alcoholic, but I could see myself becoming one. Mm. Um, I would have three or four drinks at night a day. And I thought that's really too much. And I felt like um, I always wanted another one. Right. And I didn't feel like I just like Jody, my wife, she can have a glass of wine and that's it. She doesn't have to have three glasses or four glasses, but that was my case. And right. even then I wanted more. So I didn't like that. So what I said is, this is like 20 years ago now. I said, I will just stop <laughs> for a while and see what happens. <laughs> yes. And I'm still stopped for a while and I see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my answer to you about porn. 
don't say you'll never use porn again. Just, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to use it for a while. I'm going to see what happens. Right. It's a little bit of a brain trick, but it isn't because you don't know what the future is going to bring. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll all be locked up again and we won't be able to do anything and we'll have to You have an outlet and we'll never be able. And who knows what's going to happen in life. So I don't like to say I'll never, never. But I will say that um, have you ever gone to a historical location like we went to a historical like a little town or something that's very historical very old like oh we they're my first... favorite <laughs> i love that so we <laughs> went in sicily an old like rome and sicily is fantastic with greek and roman ruins there's this little town that's very old they have these dirt roads and they have these grooves in the middle of them they're like deep grooves what are those grooves well the grooves are when they would take an ox cart or a wagon they would take it in the same place on the road and pretty soon it creates furrows or grooves in the road. Right. And those deepen and pretty soon that's that's the road. You can also see it when you're hiking in a in a woodsy forest area. There there are these trails that animals have built and Indians, Native Americans have used. Mm -hmm. And those trails are there even at long after they're overgrown. There's still a trail there. Mm -hmm. If you were to go in a thick, dense woods you'd find it easier to go on that path even though no one's used it for a hundred years because it's still there in a sense that's how it is with porn the brain has wiring or neural pathways that have deep grooves in them that favor the use of porn and fantasy mm. so you always have that tendency in your brain so you might have gotten rid of it mostly but it's still there at a deeper level. Right. It'll never really go away. So it's really easy for me to start drinking again or for someone else or, or me to get into porn again. Right. It's all too easy. And our brains are really, really good at convincing us to do it because the reward circuit is so dominant in our brains, especially when we're on the dopamine oh, track. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, here's an example. I'm just going to look once. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to look. What's the harm in that? Or I'm going to look at these um, personal ads on the dating sites and these mm -hmm. pictures of girls. They're, they're sexy and they're arousing, but I'm not doing anything. I'm just looking at that. These are all examples of our brain convincing. And then one thing leads to another and we end up back into relapsing. Now, if I relapsed, it's because I just did, you know, and I just get back on the horse. And it's like from now on, I'm not using porn and I'm going to avoid the, these um, personal ads and dating sites. Right. You have to learn how to use dating sites. You have to get on them for 10 minutes, send your messages, answer the messages and get off them. You can't be surfing these dating sites. There's so many things that are exciting that lead us down back into this <laughs> because of those deep grooves in the brain. And yes. our brain loves to convince us that it's okay just this once. Yes. It's not. It's not really. Um, but I did find in working with many, many thousands of men that the men who relapsed and just started again, they, had a, they were fine. You have to look at a relapse as a necessary part of your recovery, mm -hmm. not as a failure. And the more people thought it was a failure and the shame they had, the worse and the more likely they were to relapse, actually. So in other words, self-punishment actually makes it more likely that you'll relapse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to be a, a marijuana smoker, uh, really addicted to marijuana. And uh, yeah, well, when I stopped smoking marijuana, there was this great emptiness in my life because mm -hmm. I didn't have that anymore. And, you know, my brain always wanted to convince me that it was okay just a, you know, little bit. And if I had a puff, you know, because I gave in, mm -hmm. then my brain would say, well, you're already a little high. Why not just today? You'll just smoke weed all day. Right. Because you're already high. And then tomorrow I'll start again. Like, like all these rationalizations. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same thing with porn, even greater extent to porn. Um, so another question on the same level, by the way, is um, if you're supposed to avoid porn, you're supposed to avoid fantasy. What about pretty girls that are on the street or that you see or at the beach or, you know, you work with or whatever? They're perfectly fine to look at because they're real. Mm -hmm. It's just porn that you're not looking at. So right. you want to look at pretty girls. And another thing that comes up here is you said no, to stop masturbation and porn. What about sex with my wife? What about sex with my girlfriend? I should stop that too, right? No, 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 no. You should do that as much as you can. Right, that's sex with a human with, physical partner. Yeah, that's not going to interfere with your, your recovery. Mm -hmm. It's the porn and masturbation that you're avoiding, but that's absolutely helpful and desirable. But I would say that if you can have sessions of cuddling and naked, and that's even better, mm -hmm. alternating with times when you have sex. Right. Um, so a lot of people find it very useful to have a schedule where they say, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Sunday we have sex, and the other days we're going to cuddle in the morning. You know, they have a, they work it out. And actually, although that seems like it's not spontaneous and it's mechanical, it's actually really helpful um, for a lot of people. It um, takes the, the pressure off. 
Yeah, it takes the pressure off because you're not trying to. I know I'm always trying to get her to want to have sex with me, and it's a lot of pressure I'm putting on her. Right. And also, we don't know are we or are we not? Should I be mentally ready or not? Um, and so this way, it's like just understood when and where. And the other times, you want to do a lot of naked cuddling. That's and, and all those kinds of things are super super helpful for avoiding porn and masturbation and getting more wired to to real sex and the <laughs> sensations and feelings again. Mm-hmm. All right. So next question. Yes, please. All right. I'm alone by myself and porn is the way I get through the day and night. What do I do? Well, I think the the problem is for this man is that he has porn and masturbation as his substitution or replacement for going out and meeting women and getting and getting a partner. Mm -hmm. Don't you think, Heather? Y yes, I, I do. And so if he removes that, he needs a replacement. So one of the strategies for replacement is, so make a list on a piece of paper of the times when you use porn. Usually they'll be like this. I use porn when I wake up in the morning uh, in order to, you know, get the day sort of fired up. I use porn when I'm alone by myself, when my roommate's gone. I use porn to get to sleep at night. Uh -huh. um, so you make a list. And then under each time you use porn, determine what we call a replacement behavior. Right. Like, so when I wake up in the morning, I'm, instead of that, I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to do 20 push-ups. Mm -hmm. Then instead of when, I, when the house is empty and my roommate's away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the coffee place and I'm going to have coffee and read. That, so, so those are replacement behaviors. At night, when I'm going to go to sleep, instead of uh, porn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the internet and I'm just going to read, uh, read, read a novel. So right. you have it all figured out in advance. Figuring out in advance is key, and being gracious to yourself when you don't do the thing you're trying to do is also key. Yeah, I mean, if it if it if it doesn't work that time, you know, it'll work next time. Right. But if it's pretty easy to do if you decide this, and then you get into doing it for a while, and it makes it easier to do it the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and then you're on a you're on a on a roll. Mm -hmm. And for the guy that's like just not really dating or anything, he's just home. This is a way for him to get out and begin exploring these relationships now so one of the things that we found that was very helpful over the years for men who were by themselves like this is to enroll in a ballroom dance class it's great or salsa latin what they call latin those are the best ones <clears throat> either latin or ballroom those are where you have partners mm -hmm. especially ballroom because ballroom is developed into a formal way to touch each other right that's not sexual but they're still very physically close and so you get to meet different girls and you get to learn how to dance. Now, people say, I don't know how to dance. I have two left feet. That's okay. You don't have to know how to dance. You'll learn how to dance. You'll be fine. You can be crummy at it. It's perfectly fine. Ballroom uh, a lot people of women are, are in these... generally very gracious people. I, I've taken especially ballroom because... three different times. Yeah. Yeah, especially so. there's usually more women than men and they just like yeah. men to, to be in the group. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great way to get going physically. And I, I have found many times that was enough for a man to, when we've coached men, they get do some ballroom and then they end up meeting somebody they, mm -hmm. they hadn't dated in years and years, mm -hmm. you know? So, and maybe they thought they had ED and nothing was working or whatever. It doesn't matter all. Everything gets resolved this way. So that's a good uh, activity to, to start with. Mm. Very good. How long do you want to live? How long does any of us have to live? I've spent 25 years figuring out a way that we can live decades longer than otherwise. I traveled the world, interviewed scientists, interviewed old people. There are people 100, 110, or 120 living happy, fulfilling lives, having romance in their life, having a wonderful life, doing active things. You're not hearing about those people. So why would you limit yourself? Why would you limit yourself to 70 or 80 years and being sick and ending up in a nursing home and all the dementia and all the issues that we all have? Why limit yourself? I personally believe that I am going to live to 120. And that's why I wrote the Book, Healthy Don't 20. Based on my 25 years of research, I found one single thing that I think makes all the difference. Now, there's lots of other things that matter, but there's one thing that makes all the difference. This one thing. I found a one food. This one food that people live into 100, 110, or 120 eat all the time, and that all the so called experts are not eating, and they'll tell you it's bad. It's the devil. This is the bad food. Look at people like Robert Atkins. Robert Atkins in his 70s. Now, people say, oh, he slipped on ice, Matt. Yeah, he slipped on ice, but he had a heart attack. He had hardening the arteries. He was obese. Look it up. Yul Gibbons. 
young. Nathan Pritikin, young. All these people, they young because they're avoiding this one food. I think this one food is the key to my extending my life decades longer. If you want to do that, get my book. You can spend about 30 bucks on Amazon to buy it, or you can get it from me and it's free. I'll send it to you. Just help me out with shipping if you can. So let me tell you what's some of what's in the book. Blood sugar. Blood sugar is super, super important. I discovered that these very, very old men have perfect blood sugar. Mine was hot. So I started doing what they're doing. I adjusted a little bit like a tweak in how I have breakfast now. And my blood sugar is like 80, 85, 90 when I wake up every day, which is which is really good. I put that on page 276. Then there's fitness and exercise. None of these men work out in a gym, but they're super fit. I wanted to be fit. So what I did is I looked at what they do to stay active and I found like a 10 minute routine and activity I do every day and I'm really fit and I don't have to worry about setting foot in the gym. That's on page 316. Prostate health is key to men. Without it, we're sunk. These men have no pee problems. And I was having those problems. So I looked at what they do and their diet and all these sort of things. And I came up with this, I'll just call it a, a tapping, 90 second tapping thing. Keeping my prostate great, no more pee problems. Instead of getting up three times a night, I don't get up at all. My wife Jody gets to sleep and we're much happier this way, page 101. So let's take cholesterol. You know how a lot of guys worry so much about cholesterol. Well, these men virtually all have perfect cholesterol. And I think it's because their metabolic rate is high. And when your metabolic rate is high, you have good normal cholesterol. So I figured out a way to maintain my metabolic rate. My cholesterol numbers are outstanding. And the doctor said, you don't need to take anything. I don't know what you're doing. Just keep doing it. I'll, I put that on page 162. So let's talk about weight. None of these men are fat, but none of them are on a diet either. They're eating the one food, remember. And I did a little bit of tweaking with the one food and I was able to lose 38 pounds. I went from about 225 to 188. And I show you exactly what I did. No counting calories, no skipping meals, nothing like that. Super, super easy. I put that on page 250. Blood pressure is another thing. Now blood pressure is something we don't think about. These long live men all have great blood pressure. I found that living at high altitude in the mountains, in the hills helps blood pressure. But I came up with a very simple way since I'm living on the flatlands to have good blood pressure. Mine's 120 over 80 now using an oxygen method that simulates altitude. It's real easy. It's got my blood pressure great and help lots of other people. And I put that on page 139. So you can buy my book Health 120 on Amazon for $29.95 or let me send it to you without charge. I'll just ask you if you can to help me out with the shipping. That would be super, super. Do we have one, do we have a uh, room? For uh, time there's for one, more. one more. One okay, more. One question. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is also one that I, I think we see a version of a lot. And that is, um, this is really hard. I've tried quitting uh, mm -hmm. before and right. I have failed miserably. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard. Um, that's absolutely true. Um, so the replacement behaviors is a good one. I, have you tried the replacement behaviors? Have you tried making a list of the times when you were when you would masturbate to porn and then what to do instead and then following that. That's a really key thing. Another thing you can do is when you have a fantasy thought, you can, I think of like a big, huge red X in the sky, this giant red X, mm -hmm. where I hear these bells and sirens. Remember those old World War II, the submarine movies where they'd have like a klaxon bell when they would dive, dive, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I think of those sounds. <laughs> so, and that, <laughs> that occupies my mind so that it's not engaging the fantasy anymore. If I engage in a fantasy for more than a few seconds, it can be very arousing. Mm -hmm. And I have found it induces a sexual horniness cocktail in my body for about 30 minutes. Right. Where I'm horny for about 30 minutes. Right. And I could easily rub one out if I was that, if I was doing that. <laughs> so instead of that, as soon as I see that there is something sexual going on, what I'll do is the red X or the sirens. I have other methods too. And um, I also, when there's a, a sex scene, I turn away. And I have found if something is intriguing, arousing to me, inevitably, I just have to turn away and use the red X or some of those methods. So it's avoiding fantasy carefully, avoiding anything that's <clears throat> stimulating or, or erotic or arousing, mm -hmm. replacement behaviors. And then I think you're going to be in really, really good shape. Now, one thing that I want to really emphasize for you is this. We've been able to just go on the surface here. This has been great. I hopefully have shown you a path to change your whole life around. If you are following this path, you're going to have an abundant sex life. You're going to leave all your buddies behind. They're going to be so jealous because you have so much amazing sex and it's like never an issue in your whole life anymore. Right. And everything, romance, sex, love. You have a relationship that anybody is envious of. 
um, I'm going on 40 years on a relationship, and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's an incredible relationship, and it's kept my wife looking really, really young, too. I mean, really sexy and young, because this whole thing is just so much better for our health, uh, right? But what I suggest you do is there's a link uh, that we're, I'm putting on the screen, and uh, we'll put on the screen and, and below, where you can go on. We have a, a whole system with a book called Healthy to One Twenty which shows you all sorts of medical and health things for men for sexual health that you can be doing to have this type of sex life and live to age 120, which is what I plan to do. We also have all these bonuses around sex and we give you that. It's like, for example, you can start on VastMax, the vascular maximizer, Uh which is an incredible technology that you do at home where you increase the blood vessels in your male unit safely increase the blood flow very <laughs> safely and there's no nothing that causes injury and it, it results with all the additional blood flow you have amazing erections and the penis grows fatter and bigger because of the additional blood vessels that are laid in through angiogenesis it's a really big deal the amount of testimonials that we've gotten on vast max incredible absolutely incredible the results that men get with us uh, absolutely and it, it's like vascular maximizer my interest in it when it was developed when we, we found sort of a, uh, a technology, we improved it, started testing it with men, and they were testing it at home, and we just got, we, we refined it. It got really, really good. My interest was originally quality of erections so that us men would have really good erections. But then I, the, the part about growing a fatter and longer penis is, mm-hmm. very, is very nice, and a lot of men do it just for that, and I, and I can't blame them. So you get to start that, you get access to that. Maybe you have uh, uh, issues with uh, prostate or you have blood sugar issues, you're on various, you know, medical treatments. That's all great. But what we'll show you through our research is how you can uh, oftentimes change some of the things you're doing that your doctor will prove up for your doctor. Say, I don't know what you did, but you don't need these pills anymore. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you off of them. Mm -hmm. And we've had men, you know, that have recovered from all kinds of things that are regarded as things that you don't get over that you need lots of pills for. Right. And their doctor said, yeah, you don't need the pills for it. Just, you know, you better stop because you don't need them anymore. All kinds of conditions. So we have developed all of these transformations that you go through um, step by step with uh, uh, just make these simple changes, simple tweaks Mm -hmm. to have better sex, health, uh, huge improvements and add probably decades to life. And, And what we do is we'll just get you the book. You can actually get it sent. It's a real book for free sent to your home. We'll give you an electronic copy immediately, and we'll get you access to all of this. Mm-hmm. And I think it's five dollars. I want to say, so just yeah. a few bucks to help us out. Right. So follow that link. Make sure you get healthier than twenty and the vascular maximizer and all the bonuses. Make sure you start. There's a whole thing that we of stuff we couldn't get into here about Nirvana sex. That's absolutely mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling <laughs> and life-changing in very good ways. Life-changing. And here's the thing, you're not. You know, you're going to get busy with other things. This is a good time to master this area of your life, don't you think? Where, yeah, I'm so glad I did that for those few months with Matt Cook. It changed my whole life. And everything from then on is so different. It's so much better. Mm-hmm. You're so much happier. And you have so much uh, sexual and, and, and uh, material abundance in your life and so much love in your life. You're an example to your children. You're an example to your grandchildren if you get grandchildren because they see how loving you are with your partner with your with and and how wonderful life is and they just feel that and so you're actually helping a lot of other people get much more uh straightened out in their path right and so follow that link get healthy in 20 get the vascular maximizer all the, the little bonuses and goodies i think you're going to love it this is just the very very beginning so thank you very much for for tuning in make sure you get that and also on this channel we talk about sex and health discoveries that no one is talking about uh, with my health researchers so hit like to promote this to other people on YouTube and hit the subscribe so that you get an alert and the bell icon so you get an alert when there's a new video coming up. And um, in addition, there's a couple of videos here that you're going to want to check out right now mm-hmm. after you've clicked on the link and gotten healthy to 120. And thank you so much. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.